Sound design. All right, so I have a question for you. If I grab the speaker and flip it around so it faces the rear, does that polarity invert the signal? Think about it for a second. Um, A student asked me this recently, and it made my head hurt a little bit, and I realized that I had some competing ideas in my head about um, how speakers work versus how instruments work. And so I wanted to just talk about that for a few seconds in case other people are having sort of, uh, if, if this question makes your brain hurt, then hopefully this video will help a little bit. Here's why I think this question makes your brain hurt. Um, I asked this question in my student community and you can see most people are saying no, but 25% said yes. Uh, I just posted this question a while ago on YouTube and I only have five votes. It was only an hour ago. You can see there's still some division as to to what's going on with this question. Maybe I didn't ask the question correctly, so maybe the question's confusing, but but let's look at this. So um, let's see. I have this video over here from Al Stefancic where he's talking about miking um, a snare drum. And I think this is maybe where this idea comes from because one of the first things we learn about miking drums is that if you would like to get the nice sound of the snare on the bottom of the snare drum and you're gonna put a microphone down there and you're going to put it equidistant like this, then you need to do a polarity inversion on the input channel where that microphone comes in. Otherwise, you're gonna have problems. Okay, so we all learned that a long time ago. And we are familiar with this idea. I like this. I found this video of a slow motion snare drum. We're familiar with this idea that when the top head is struck up here, then the bottom head also goes down at the same time. And so we have these equidistant microphones that are receiving opposite pressure. And that's why we need to polarity invert them so that they'll go in the same direction when they get summed together in our console digital audio workstation. Um, I have another image here from Sound on Sound. So here is a recording of those two microphones. And if I draw on this, it should be pretty easy to see that where we have a peak here, then at about the same time down here on the bottom snare mic, we have a peak, but in the opposite direction. Now we start thinking about how this relates to loudspeakers. And we think, oh, it's the same thing, right? We've got positive pressure going in this direction and we've got um, negative pressure going in the other direction. I should probably use different colors. Anyway, um, this is I think kind of what we're thinking Um, and here's just the same picture but just the parts exploded out. Positive pressure, negative pressure. So if I go back into my simulation here and I take a look at this speaker and I look at it at this microphone, then what do we expect to see? Well, I'm thinking that there's going to be a positive peak going up. Okay, let's measure that. Let's zoom in. And let's store, let's auto set delay. And let's store that. So I feel like my expectation was met. I expected a positive peak. So now if I have this idea that if I flip the speaker around and now at that same microphone, the peak should go down, then the same thing would be true if I left the speaker the same way, but just measured behind it, right? So I have a microphone back here, so we can just switch microphones. So now I'm at my 180 degree microphone, and I'll hit predict, and I'm kind of expecting to see it go down, right? Because this is my idea, I flip the speaker around. But we can see that the, the peak is totally weird now, right? Because we're not getting as much high frequency information back there behind the speaker but we still have a peak to look at and it's going up. So that's weird. Um, You may be wondering why I don't have this perfectly in the center. Um, And that's because it takes a little bit longer for the sound to travel around the speaker and get to this microphone. Um, And so I had to offset a little bit so I could put the microphones at the exact same position, three meters and negative three meters, but I just moved the speaker around. Okay, but now you're thinking, okay, well that doesn't work with high frequency drivers, but surely subwoofers, which we know are omnidirectional, sounds going forward, sounds going all, sounds going everywhere. So let's test that. Let's get rid of this X40. I've got a 750 here. 
Let's measure the 750 at our front microphone. Let's auto set delay. Let's zoom out. We'll store this. And now let's do the same thing. Let's just switch to the rear microphone so we don't have to go to the trouble of actually flipping the speaker around. Oh, same problem. <laughs> Yes, it's arrived a little bit later, and that's why I had to change the position a little bit so that I could line the peaks up perfectly on top of each other, but same polarity. And if you like to look at phase, we can do that. So here we go at our zero degree microphone store. And here's our rear microphone, and it's uh, exactly the same. So what's going on here? I think the confusion is that um, sound is not coming out of the rear of this subwoofer the way you are imagining it, like this, um, or like this, or like this. Okay, this is kind of what we're imagining. And that might be true if this were not closed in the back. So we might be tempted to think that positive pressure coming out here and then negative pressure coming out here. But that's not really happening because it gets here and it says, oh, I can't get out this way. So then it goes over here and out here and then it actually comes out of a port somewhere. And then maybe then it goes around the speaker and, and that, that's why it takes a little bit longer to get to that rear microphone. But you have experienced an open back driver. And where you have experienced that is with an open back guitar cabinet. So it's pretty common for a guitar amplifier to be open on the back. And many times in studio sound, we will mic the front and the back and you have the same situation, right? You need to polarity invert that rear microphone. I can't insert a guitar amp into Map XT, but I have tried to make a simulation to play with this. So it looks like these two speakers are really far apart. Um, but just imagine that this is a big guitar amp and that this speaker up here is the going to simulate the forward pressure of that single speaker and this uh, sub back here is going to simulate the rear pressure. So if I play these both at the same time, this is the kind of pattern that we would get with an open back guitar amp, right? Uh, similar to um, a microphone that receives on two sides that's open on the back you're gonna get this figure eight pattern, guitar amplifier, figure eight pattern of coverage, subwoofer, not a figure eight pattern because it's not open on the back. Um, and the way I built this, in case you're curious, is I just turn this guy on. Let's look at him at the zero degree microphone. And store. And then I just inverted the polarity at this guy and pushed him back far enough so that his peaks would still line up with the peaks of the other guy um, so that we'd have a lot of, I, I wanted to make a really dramatic example, right? Okay, in case this has all still confused you, there's one way that always works for me. Anytime I'm ever getting confused and I'm like, ah, oh, this, this still doesn't make sense to me, you can always insert a gradient array in Map XT. The next question that I have found people often get to once they realize that flipping a subwoofer around does not invert the polarity, then they say, wait, but isn't that how you build a cardioid subwoofer array? You flip the sub around so that it inverts the polarity. That's not right. Um, you flip the sub around to create delay. So I have another video called Why Do You Polarity Invert the Rear Sub in a Cardioid Array? where um, I suggest you watch it if you haven't. It's just a nice step-by-step -step illustration of how an inline gradient cardioid subwoofer array works. But right now, I'm not gonna go over that, but I am going to show you one. So here I've got the same subwoofers, but now they're creating a cardioid subwoofer array. So I can do a prediction at 80 hertz, and we're too zoomed in to really appreciate it. You can see that we've got summation going this to the front and uh, you know cancellation going to the rear. And so just keep that in mind because the inverted gradient stack is the exact same principle, just um, smushed together so that it uses less real estate. So here we've got two processing channels, right? Um, 
let me expose that for you. So here's my gradient inline forward, gradient inline rearward, and I've got normal polarity and reverse polarity. So you always need two processing channels, one with the polarity inversion and the delay. So let's compare that then to an inverted gradient stack. And uh, this is really fast in case you ever get confused and you're, and you're like, wait, how does this work? You can open up MapXT, just right click, choose insert gradient flown subwoofer array. And when you do that, take note of two important things. Uh, number one, we have two processing channels and we are achieving a polarity inversion, not by flipping the sub around, but with an electronic polarity inversion. Number two, we can automatically apply the processing that we need, namely the delay, directly into our process. So make sure you check this and make sure you choose the right channels. Okay, so I've already inserted this, so I'm not gonna do it again, but that's what's going on here. We have two speakers facing forwards, one facing to the rear, and it's the one that's facing to the rear that has the delay and polarity inversion. So over here, you can see I've got gradient forward, gradient rear, and this is my stack. And if I do a prediction, we'll see that we get summation to the front and cancellation to the rear. So just to summarize, flipping a sub around does not invert its polarity because the back is closed. And the way we achieve this polarity inversion in our gradient subwoofer arrays is through an electronic polarity inversion, not by this change in orientation. All right, let me know what questions come up for you about this and let me know if you have any suggestions for me. I'm always trying to improve my own understanding of these principles. Thanks. Sound design. Yeah.